What if your grace, Lord Destro, suggested to you that a woman's past sexual partners could be affecting her in ways you may have never imagined? Some theories claim that the sperm from past partners can impact not only a woman's mental stability, but also her sex drive. I mean, think about it. Can we please put a time limit on bodies? I feel like a man that hit 10 years ago shouldn't be able to still claim that he hit me and 10 year ago me. Uh, we not the same person. We're not the same person. She's been gone a long time. You didn't hit this. You didn't hit this. The bar was in hell back then. There should be an expiration date, no? This is a big revelation. This would place a direct correlation between a woman's mental health and her accumulated body count. Such a theory may help to explain some of the issues facing the modern woman. Maybe all this ick talk or I'm turned off by men rhetoric is just a simple side effect of large amounts of sexual discharge floating around in a promiscuous woman. It is so rare that I even find men that I'm attracted to, like... Seriously? It is difficult as hell for me to even come across even one person that I'm interested in for real, for real. Like most of the people are not, I don't feel like they're worthy enough for me to be interested in. I have to feel the energy, like the attraction has to be there. And I'm and trying to figure out like, am I broken or is everybody else broken and just willing to adapt to, you know, anything? Because it's just hard for me to like actually be attracted to, to men. Maybe all this I don't need a man talk. I don't need no man. It's not a woman empowerment cause action, but really just a hormonal imbalance. How far-fetched is this assumption? I mean, we are talking about a teaspoon of liquid that sparks the essence of life. Should we really question its potency? I am consistently so turned off by men that I'm wondering, do I even like Great minds before your grace, Lord Destro, have proposed this theory to you. Men like Aristotle, who forged the belief of telegony, which states the heredity of individuals is influenced not only by the father, but also by previous males the female may have made it with or who contributed to earlier pregnancies. That's sick, man. This would imply that every one night stand or new sneaky link can affect the biology of a woman and even affect the gender of your potential offspring. Now take a second to absorb that thought and the potential possibilities. How many bodies, Greenlee? Eight. Even Charles Darwin speculated on the alleged case of telegony, that of a mere horse made it to a zebra and subsequently to an Arabian stallion by whom the mere horse produced a baby fowl with faint stripes on its legs. Legs, legs. The part that does start getting weird is that we know that some of the cells from the fetus stay in the mother and some of the cells from the mother stay in the fetus. And so they have found male DNA in women's livers and their heart and even their brains 30 years after they gave birth. So those cells are somehow crossing the blood-brain barrier. Another controversial aspect is whether sperm from past partners can remain in a woman's body and continue to affect her beyond conception. According to medical news today, sperm can live in the female's reproductive tract for up to five days. But what happens after that? Now here's the rub. Some theories suggest that leftover genetic materials from sperm may have long-term effects. There's some good but limited evidence that this material could somehow influence hormone regulation and even a woman's mental state. Maybe we, the initiated, must reevaluate the importance of a woman's body count. And most importantly, our tenuous relationships with OnlyFans providers. <laughs> I messed up my two-year celib celibacy for three minutes. It don't count. It don't count, girl. Three minutes. Anything under three minutes don't count. And if you use a condom, it really don't count. You good. You can still say you celibate. She can't be saved. But here's the real question that's driving you crazy right now. Could genetic material from previous partners stick around in a woman's body? Translation, can you be deep stroking in a pool of her exes? Well, some studies in animals suggest that cells from a fetus can remain in the mother of a body for years. This phenomenon, known as microimerism, 
has led some to theorize that male DNA from sperm might stay in a woman's body after intercourse, potentially affecting her in subtle ways. Alternatively, women could still be peppered with male fetal cells Pepper. during routine sexual intercourse or from pre-existing fetal material of matrilineal generations. I mean, theoretically speaking, high body count women may have random male DNA molecules floating around their bodies. DNA molecules that may affect her on a cellular, hormonal, or cognitive level. The more bodies she accumulates, the higher concentration of random male DNA molecules she will have in her body. Free radicals and DNA confusion. I mean, this is DNA that even her own immune system cannot recognize as a foreign substance. Also, it is not clear why a mother's immune system does not recognize male fetal cells, which have unfamiliar DNA, as foreign. Yes, my friends, you can actually digmatize a woman's immune system. <laughs> the pathway for random male cells is even more pronounced in mothers with different quote-unquote baby fathers. Yes, even her cells are for the streets. <laughs> I just realized something. I have four kids from four different men, right? Two of those men, one is from Haiti, one is from Africa. The other two, one is from New York, the other one is from New York too. Right? She's sick. Yeah, let's just add that as reason 2084 why it's probably not a good idea to seriously date or marry single mothers. Especially, I mean especially ones that have multiple baby fathers. The higher the body count, the more violent the mosh pit. You ain't lying. Your grace predicts that as we continue to see an increase in overall body count per capita, we will also see a rise in narcissism, depression, and delusion from the 304 population. Now I dare not invite you to the astral plane, where we discuss how such free radicals or demons might affect her spiritually. But that, my friends, is a talk for another day. Found that in uh, someone's lifetime, they had 29% adults' likelihood of being diagnosed with depression. That's one in three of us. Highest rates were in people 18 to 44. And there was a difference, men versus women. Women, 37% diagnosed with depression in their lifetime versus men, 20%. Why so high? You know, I think we don't know an, a specific answer to that. We don't know an, a specific answer to that. I mean, at this point, it's only speculation. But Lord Destro challenges you to consider such evidence like the rise of the masculine alpha female, the ravaging 304 epidemic. Are there any plus size 304s? And the increasing amounts of single post-war women as a possible effect from the slow rise in 304 activities. Let's not even get into body dysmorphia, reportery makeup, and the BBL crisis. This revelation should only increase the value of the feminine low body count, virtuous unicorn, oh, I mean woman, that we all cover. Yeah, all cover, all cover. So let it be written. Now, if you want your grace, Lord Destro, to take a deep stroke into high body count topics like this in the future, then hit the like button, drop a comment, and leave some rations in the cash app for the Cobra movement. And although you will never be worthy of a monarch such as myself, the Lord Destro would suggest that you poor fools at least give oligarchy a try. So be it, Lord Destro has spoken.